Welcome to Adore Event on Twine. In this video, we're going to look at hidden hooks, show and hide macros. So we've seen how changers, a kind of macro within Harlow 3.3, allow us lots of ability to change things, hence their name. We can change the text style, text color, we can enchant things, we can change things, we can write our content, use the change or enchant macro to change things, we can do all kinds of things. Part of what we can do when naming hooks, and a name is just some selection we've used as part of lots of other macros, like the if macro and other things. Part of naming them, though, also comes with our ability to hide their initial content. So we can create what's called hidden hooks. And then we can use the show and hide macro to reveal or hide content that is within those hooks. And this creates a really interesting usage of allowing us to change the visual presentation, hence changers, by showing or hiding things. So let's kind of dig into this a little bit. Okay, so one of the ways we can approach enchantments is not only changing the style or color or font or all kinds of things within Harlow, we can also make it completely disappear or show it as needed. So if we want to hide a particular hook, we use a parenthesis instead of a greater than sign. So here I have a bar, I have the name of the hook, and then I have this little closing parenthesis right here, or right hand parenthesis. And it says you can't see this. In fact, if I run this, you won't see that hook. If we build and play, it's not there. It's completely hidden. We have created a hidden hook. So why might we want to do that? Well, there might be situations where we want to show or hide something as a result of some other action. That is, as we've seen with changers, and particularly with the change and enchant macro, we can affect other things by knowing their name. We can use the change macro to change things, target very specific hooks by knowing the name of that hook. We can also, using the enchant macro, change words, phrases, or symbols, and how they appear within the passage by knowing their name, using either a named, for, a named tag for a hook or just a word or phrase or symbol. So show and hide become really, really useful for allowing us to affect various things based on their name. In this particular case, we're targeting the name tag to allow us to show or hide that corresponding hook. And this can be really, really useful. So let's dig in for first creating a hidden and then showing it based on its name. So in this case, I'm using the link macro to create a link, show the hidden hook, and then notice inside its hook, it says show and then the name tag hidden over here that started by being hidden. Again, whenever we want to hide, we're interested in the closing or the right-hand uh, parentheses or right parentheses. So right here, notice show. What are we showing? The hook associated with this name tag, which is up here. So you can't see this until we click this link and then it becomes shown. So let's go ahead and change start of story to example two, build and play. So we can't see it right right now, but now we can. You can't see this. But now we can see it because the show macro, which affects the name tag and connects the name tag to the corresponding hook, allows us to show. Well, what if we wanted to hide something again? So potentially we start hidden and then we show it. And what if we want to rehide it? Well, that gets us to example three. So the sister to the show macro is the hide macro. So we have right here the use of a normal name tag we've seen in previous examples. Notice the use of the greater than sign and it pointing towards the thing that it's associated with. So the name tagged to the hook right here. And then notice link rerun show right here. Link rerun hide using the exact same name. So if I want to, I can hide it or show it again. So let's jump into example three. And I'm going to go ahead and change a start of the story. Change the little rocket ship over to example three. So we can see it because it's just a normal and tame tag that we've seen in all other examples up to this video. And I would click, in fact, if I click show, it doesn't really do anything. But if I click hide, now it's hidden and I want it back. And now it's hidden and I want it back. And if I click hide again, it doesn't really do anything. But this allows us to more 
visually manage content within a passage. That's another example of enchantment, that we see things like styles and colors. And we can think of enchantments as changing lots of the visual presentation. But part of that changing of the visual presentation is also the showing and hiding of it. They're all part of enchantment within Harlow. So one of the things we can start to do is hide hooks if we want by using the parentheses instead of the greater than sign, or we can use the show and hide macros using the name of that hook to change their, vis their visibility. They can be shown or hidden. And this creates some really useful ways of, again, approaching how we show content to users or players or however we're thinking about things within Harlow. So along our road here of looking at changers, there's things like style and font and color, size. There's also visibility. We can show and hide hooks. And we notice that show and hide work very similar to what we saw with the change macro, right? Targeting a hook based on its name tag. So show and hide open the possibility of now introducing visibility along with all the other types of things we've seen as part of enchantments in Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.